What's the role of a disciple of Jesus? And what is the role of the pastor? Those are questions Pastor Nicole explores in her message today. I'm Pastor Jason Barnett, and this is the Dirt Pastor Man Podcast. We have to put our own wants 
constantly decide for the benefit of someone else. But we're too busy. We have enough on our face. It might offend someone. It might require that I may think what I have always believed. Allowing God to use His gifts for His kingdom is not easy. So many of us don't want to do it. So the question we're asking today is simply, what if I don't want to? What if I don't want the responsibilities that come with the gifts? What if I don't want to acknowledge what God has gifted me to do? What if I don't want to commit? What if I don't want to put myself aside? I like my life just the way it is. I don't want to change it. And I know that answering God's call means that I have to change something and that's just too difficult. Now, I'm happy just coming to church once a week, sitting in the pew, warming it up for a little while, and going about my business, changing nothing. It's a lot easier to just sit and be a pew warmer the burden of change is easy to leave at the altar. You hear a sermon, you feel convicted, and you come to the altar and you're like, okay, I'm good now. And then you sit it. I went to the altar, I'm good. And that's if we actually go to the altar. But we don't want the extra work that comes along with that conviction. We don't want to change. We don't want to have to do anything beyond attending church once a week. And the reason why is because we haven't really left our old lives behind. We might have attended church for 30 years. But that old life that we live Monday through Saturday is still there. We don't want to leave it. But Paul addresses this too. Later on in chapter 4, he says, So I say and insist in the Lord that you no longer live as the Gentiles do. In the futility of their thinking, they are darkened in their understanding, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardness of their hearts. Paul is cautioning the Ephesians church, the Ephesian church, to not live as they once had. To leave that old life behind. Elsewhere it says, I render the old man dead. Leaving that life behind is essential. Following Christ. And to fulfill the call of Christ, we cannot maintain the self-focused attitude that we once had. Paul cautions us to not let the hardness of our hearts prevent us from fulfilling what God was, is commanding us to do. And what is God commanding? What is commanded of every believer? If you flip back to the Gospel of Matthew, the very words of Jesus, he says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. God's command directly to his disciples is to go and make disciples. Jesus didn't call together a bunch of people that, you know, are called to be pastors 
and say, okay, well, this is your job, but the rest of the church can just go and do their thing and be the field warmers, or the fact that they didn't even have to, they just took for six hours. How would you guys like that? <laughs> He didn't, he didn't say that this was only the job of the pastors. No, he told every single one of his disciples, every single one of his followers, go and make disciples. And what that means, what that implies, is that those disciples would go and make more disciples. And then those disciples would go and make more disciples. And then they would make more disciples. And it would just snowball. As each new generation of disciples would go and make another disciple and another and another, the church would grow and the cause of Christ would advance. But I want to put something out to you. That call to go and make more disciples is not optional. Jesus didn't say, oh, if you want to. If you want to go and make more disciples, no. It was a direct command from their superior. If you're in the military and you disobey a superior officer, you're going to get court martial. Oh. But this is the great commission. This is the great command to go and make more disciples. Therefore, making disciples is not optional for a follower of Jesus. In fact, I would argue that coming into church on a Sunday morning and being content to just warm up you, but then going out and living your daily life the same way you always did it, not making disciples, not furthering in the kingdom, is not only not following God's call, it is direct disobedience. The fact is, we don't want to buy into that. Because it means that we have to take responsibility. We want to, put, we want to pin it all on the pastor or the Sunday school teachers. I can't tell you how many times Jason and I have gotten blamed because somebody didn't come to church after the first time visiting. Or how many times we've, we've gotten hold away the to talk on the phone to somebody because a, one of their friends attended our church and was like, well, you need to talk to the pastor because you're the pastor. You're the one who needs to do the discipleship. You're the one who needs to invite them to church. You're the one who needs to make sure that the church people stay happy and don't leave. But then the church people themselves are content to just watch everybody walk away. Or not take responsibility. They don't. They don't want to invite their friends personally. No, they want pastors. Them. They don't want to call the guests that showed up and gave them their phone number. No, they give the phone number to the pastor and say, "Hey, pastor, call." Discipleship's the same way. Hey, pastor, you need to find somebody to teach BBS. Hey, hey, pastor, we need a children's church worker. Hey, pastor, we should start another Bible study. Hey, pastor, 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 you need to do all this stuff. Hey, I have news for you. If you're feeling the burden, maybe God's telling you to do it. Your pastor's job is not to do the work for you. His job is to equip you. Your pastor's job isn't to run everything in the church. His or her job is to help you do it. You're not a skeleton. You're not a skeleton. Ephesians 4 tells us the work of a pastor, the work of an apostle, the work of a prophet, Work of a teacher is to equip the saints for the work of ministry, not to do it themselves. 
This is my job as your Cause the effectiveness of the church to come to the body of Paul. 
There's an old folk proverb. Not actually in the Bible unless you're looking at the Living Bible, which is not really a Bible. Um, but it says, um, it says, idle hands are the devil's work.
listening to this episode of the Dirt Pass Sermon Podcast. It was recorded live at the Greensburg Church in Nazarene, located at 31 Bluebird Lane in Greensburg, Kentucky. Our theme song is called The Dirt Path, performed by Jeremy Edwards. If you would like to share a word of testimony with us or what God's been doing in your life, you can reach us at P.O. Box 215, Greensburg, Kentucky, zip code 42743. Or you can also find us at www.gbirdnaz.com on the Greensburg Church and Azimuth Facebook page or the Dirt Path Facebook page.